It's Monday, December 6th, and time for your Bobby this today evening news update. Operations at some of the island's polyclinics were affected today as some nurses stayed off the job. These include the St. Philip Polyclinic in Six Roads that only catered to persons with emergencies and patients requiring dressing, and the Glebe Polyclinic where only emergencies were accommodated. Minister of Health and Wellness, the Most Honorable Lieutenant Colonel Jeffrey Bostick, told Barbados today a number of nurses had reported sick. At the weekend, General Secretary of the Unity Workers' Union, Senator Caswell Franklin, reported that some nurses at the geriatric hospital walked off the job after being issued with a memorandum by management last Friday informing staff that the facility will be facilitating weekly testing for employees in accordance with the Emergency Management COVID-19 Safe Zone Directive No. 2. He added that today's sickle at the polyclinics is a continuation of the strike action being taken by the nurses who are not only aggrieved about the safe zone directive, but also a number of outstanding issues. Amid the challenges in the healthcare system, 105 new COVID-19 cases, 53 males and 52 females, were recorded by the Best of Santos Public Health Laboratory from the 998 tests conducted on Sunday. The positive cases consist of 24 persons under the age of 18 and 81 persons who are 18 years and older. The number of people in isolation facilities was 283, while 2,081 are in home isolation. Three people died from the virus on Sunday. A 48-year-old woman and a 56-year-old man both passed away at the Harrison's Point Isolation Facility, while an 89-year-old woman died at the Blackman and Gollop Isolation Facility. They were all unvaccinated. The death toll stands at 240. Under the National Vaccination Program for COVID-19, the total number of persons who are fully vaccinated is 138,267 persons. That's 51% of the total population or 60.5% of the eligible population. In other news this Monday, government has again met the latest targets and benchmarks set under the Barbados Economic Recovery and Transformation Plan, despite the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic, Hurricane Elsa, and the volcanic ashfall. But there's concern about the slow pace of economic growth and a warning that unless measures are implemented to effectively manage the pandemic, it's possible those targets may not be met going forward. At a press conference today where the 12th public report of the BERT Monitoring Committee was released, the co-chair, Trisha Tannis, reported that by the end of September, fiscal and monetary targets were met. Those included the ceiling on public debt, the floor on net international reserves, the floor on social spending, and the ceiling on public institution arrears. But she said the continued severity of the impact of COVID-19, the increasing challenges with supply chain logistics globally, and the continuing rise in oil prices coupled with limited GDP growth opportunities are the main risk to the BERT program. With the anticipated prolonged prevalence of the COVID-19 pandemic, it is critical, therefore, that measures to effectively manage the situation are implemented so businesses can continue to operate safely and provide employment opportunities and to ensure that the healthcare system does not become overwhelmed. Being perceived as a safe jurisdiction in the eyes of our major tourism partners and ensuring that steps are taken to facilitate the efficient and effective conduct of businesses are critical factors to the recovery of the economy and the re-engagement of the many uh, laid off employees. Tannis added that further recovery in the tourism sector this winter season could be a fillip for the economy. GDP is also very stagnant and, and therefore the debt to GDP ratio is, is rising uh, a, bit, a bit more swiftly. Um, we can actually tamper that a bit with a bit more um, growth and that will come um, you know, hopefully as we look into a very buoyant uh, peak season, uh, winter season uh, for 2022 to kickstart um, the economy on, on some footing for 2022. Of course, assuming that we don't have any further disruption as, as occasioned by, by Omicron or any other additional variants that would force us to be a lot less competitive with our hotel or hospitality um, offering than we, than we are anticipating at the moment. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, my name is Michelle Hines and I own a company called HM Novelties. I have three children, two of which are under the age to get the vaccine and that makes them vulnerable and the eldest she is vaccinated and that's a good thing because all she wants to do is hang with her friends i take care of my 80 year old mum, and she has many comorbidities and i love my mum, and 
I would not want for anything to happen to her. I am one of the ones that suffered absolutely no symptoms for either the first or the second jab. When you have the vaccine, you have a weapon to fight against this virus, to fight against this beast. 95% of my friends and family are vaccinated and that literally makes me feel secure. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. To regional news, hospitals across Jamaica are in full preparation mode for what is being described as an inevitable fourth COVID-19 wave due to the Omicron variant. We get the details from Television Jamaica. In the Southeast Regional Health Authority, for instance, more nurses, doctors and other staff are being recruited. We got approval for 300 plus. We have already recruited some over 200. And we have, you know, we have personnel now waiting to be interviewed. And it's from all categories, from doctors, nurses, um, nurses assistants, ancillary workers, you know, just about everybody that you need to run a hospital. During the peak of the third COVID wave in August, the island battled a critical shortage of medical oxygen. Now steps are being taken to increase supply. As you know, we had a challenge in March and February, March, and again in around August. September. So we have met with IGEL. We, we are looking at other options and in some hospitals they have already put things in place though they might not have been able to respond as quickly as IGEL would be but they have put things in place to ensure that we have um, adequate oxygen supply to run these institutions. On the international scene, COVID-19 vaccine supplies to Africa are finally being wrapped up. But as we hear in this report from Reuters Television, getting shots into arms is still proven to be a major challenge. At the Sekinani Clinic in rural Kenya, they've only got one reliable fridge. And clinical officer Gerald Yayale says making sure they've enough COVID-19 vaccine is a challenge. We do not have a COVID vaccine now. We've run out of uh, stock uh, five days ago. His clinic recently had to turn Kenyans away. But Narok County, where it's located, is not short of shots. 14,000 were sitting in a fridge in the nearest town, around 70 miles away. A mix-up meant Sekinani was not sent enough. This is an example of the challenges being faced across Africa that experts say could have an impact on the pandemic globally. Until recently, vaccine supplies were low, partly due to hoarding by richer countries. Just 102 million of the continent's population are fully vaccinated. That low inoculation rate, only 7.5%, encourages viral mutations like the new Omicron variant. Shortages of funds, medical staff and equipment in some parts have further hobbled getting needles into arms. But with deliveries now finally expected to surge, experts say such weaknesses will be further exposed. Internal documents from the Gavi Vaccine Alliance say a substantial volume will be Pfizer mRNA vaccines, which require cold chain storage. Even Kenya, which has the capacity to store 3 million Pfizer shots, is worried its cold chain will become constrained, says Dr. Willis Akwale, head of the government's COVID-19 task force. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.